Kelly, could you tell me what your job is? So I am the lead nurse for acute kidney injury. I'm based at King's College Hospital uh, Foundation Trust in London, uh, where I manage a team of two other clinical nurse specialists in AKI. Um, as a team, we um, help to identify and diagnose patients with acute kidney injury, and we advise on best management for them. Uh, we also then follow these patients up in a post-AKI clinic, which is completely nurse-led, after the patients have been discharged, so about three to four weeks afterwards. Um, this gives us the opportunity to inform the patients about the risk of progression or development of CKD in the future. Um, another big part of our role is to educate the multidisciplinary teams. This includes the healthcare assistants, nurses, uh, hospital doctors and GPs, um, which really helps to increase the awareness around AKI. Um, what, what do you or one of your team members do when they actually arrive at the bedside and see an AKI patient? Uh, so when we go to review a patient, the first thing we would do is look at the patient's recent blood tests to establish a baseline creatinine and then compare this to a, the current one. This allows us to identify which stage of AKI the patient has and the severity of their AKI. Uh, we would then look through the patient's history and look at the reason for admission to hospital to try and establish a cause for the AKI. Um, and then after this we would go and physically examine the patient by uh, looking at their fluid status um, and also look at their vital signs. Um, and after this we would advise on appropriate management, further investigations um, and blood tests that may need to be done. Uh, so Kelly, you spend uh, quite a lot of, lot of your time uh, teaching ward, uh, ward nurses in the hospital. What, how would a, a ward or emergency department nurse spot a patient who is at risk of developing AKI? So there are a, hu a huge amount of patients who are at risk of developing AKI. Uh, those, uh, the elderly and those with learning disabilities or mental health problems uh, are, may forget to drink and therefore at risk of uh, dehydration. Um, those with a history of chronic kidney disease or those who have had a previous AKI in the past, along with those who have been admitted with an infection, that may develop sepsis are also at particular risk. Um, another key risk group are surgical patients and those with multiple comorbidities. So um, it's very, very important to look at a patient's history and reason for admission to hospital to assess the degree of risk um, of them developing an AKI. Let's say a nurse has identified a patient who's at risk of acute kidney injury. What could they do to prevent this occurring? So completing regular volume assessments of the patient is very important to help guide fluid therapy, especially if a patient needs rehydration. Now, this includes accurate documentation on fluid charts of input and output. Um, monitoring, frequent monitoring of vital signs is very important um, to help to look for signs of early deterioration. Um, and this, especially in patients such as septic patients who, um, if not treated, may go on to develop septic shock um, and hypotension, which can further increase the risk of an acute kidney injury. Could you explain what oliguria is, Kelly? So oliguria is a low urine output, so it's less than 0.5 mils per kilogram per hour. Uh, so if you had a patient who weighs 100 kilograms, then you would expect them to pass at least 50 mils of urine per hour. What should a nurse do if they notice that their patient has developed oliguria? So if they notice that urine output is dropping off, um, uh, you, they should complete a full set of physiological observations and work out the patient's new score uh, and then record, report this uh, directly to the nurse in charge and the doctors and if needed um, escalate even further up to the critical care outreach team. Uh, complete a volume assessment of the patient um, in order to understand whether they are dehydrated or overhydrated and what fluid therapy may be needed. Also start a fluid balance chart, so closely monitor input and output to, determine, to help you also determine um, what fluid they may, may or may not need. Um, also think about if the patient's catheterised, uh, whether, whether the catheter needs flushing, because uh, this could solve the problem, um, or, or whether a catheter should be inserted. Um, also think about um, taking, making sure there's regular blood tests done and also complete a urine dipstick test. Once a patient has established acute kidney injury, what are their nursing care priorities? So obviously regular um, assessment of the patient's vital signs and fluid balance is very important um, and also monitoring of blood tests to see if the patient's improving or deteriorating. A uh, patient with AKI may be catabolic and therefore have increased nutritional requirements so this should definitely be reviewed. 
um, and they also may be at increased risk of um, developing an infection, so um, infection control procedures should be put into place. Um, the medical team need to understand, try and understand the underlying cause of the uh, acute kidney injury um, and make sure this is being treated. And also um, the nurses and doctors should be looking at the drug chart and reviewing this to see if there are any nephrotoxic medications which can be withheld during this time. Uh, let's say um, a nurse is looking after a patient who has established acute kidney injury. What signs of deterioration would they look out for? So obviously a change in the new score would be um, a classic sign of a patient deteriorating, so this should be escalated um, um, quickly. Uh, other complications you might encounter are um, breathlessness, which may be a cause of, which might be a sign of edema, of fluid overload or acidosis. Also the patient may become drowsy um, if they have a high urea and they could be encephalopathic. Uh, also patients can develop arrhythmias if they have um, deranged electrolytes uh, which can cause cardiac arrhythmias. So Kelly, let's uh, say you're looking after a patient who's got established acute kidney injury, what would you tell them? So firstly we would um, explain what we think could cause the acute kidney injury and then go through the treatment plan and explain how the, um, the injury is being managed. Uh, we would then try and explain the results of their creatinine tests and explain the severity of their AKI um, and finally try and tell them that hopefully their kidneys will recover. So Kelly, you mentioned that you see follow uh, AKI patients in a follow-up clinic. What do you discuss with them when you see them in this clinic? So firstly we would uh, recap on what had caused the acute kidney injury in hospital and what happened during that hospital stay. Uh, we would then um, look at their current blood tests in clinic and explain to the patient about uh, their progress and how their kidneys have recovered, had recovered. Um, and then we would advise on further follow-up, so whether this was just being discharged back to a GP care or whether it would be to a general nephrology service for further monitoring. Um, and we would then educate the patient about further prevention um, of, of, of kidney damage. So this would include avoidance of nephrotoxic medications, um, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, um, regular exercise and healthy eating, um, stopping smoking if they do, um, and good blood pressure management. Kelly, where uh, do the uh, clinical teams tend to get it wrong on managing AKI patients? So often the clinical teams um, fail to respond quickly enough to signs of deterioration um, and this includes instigating appropriate fluid resuscitation early on. Also sometimes um, investigations are not done in a timely enough manner such as a urine dipstick test, renal ultrasound scan and also the review of the patient's drug charts, so stopping or withholding um, nephrotoxic medications. What do you enjoy most about your job? So I really enjoy the educating the multidisciplinary team um, to help raise awareness around AKI and prevent it occurring in the first place. Um, I also enjoy um, seeing the patient journey through, so from admission um, to developing an AKI and then to see them recover um, in clinic.